Pride celebrations are continuing across the country, but did you know one trailblazer made history right in our own backyard 47 years ago? That is when a woman from Ann Arbor became the first openly gay person in the country to be elected to political office. Local 4's Grant Hearns caught up with the change maker after she was inducted into the National Gay Rights Hall of Fame. Talking from her home in Pittsburgh, Kathy Kozichenko describes being an American rights pioneer. I was politically conscious and politically active even when I was in high school. The first thing I ever did was to bring someone from the United Farm Workers into uh, my little town of Plymouth, Michigan to speak. When it was time to go to college, Kathy chose the University of Michigan. The campus in the 1960s and 70s was a hotbed for radical new ideas, a place where she could be right in the middle of change, although she wouldn't know just how central she would become. A member of the now defunct Human Rights Party, Kathy was asked to run for Ann Arbor City Council in 1974, just after graduating. I didn't particularly want to, but I, I said yes. There were already two men on the council who had come out as gay after being elected, but Kathy was asked to run as an out candidate, the nation's very first. Being a feminist and being gay, these were all positive things. It wasn't so in the rest of the country, but it was very much so in Ann Arbor. That spring, Kathy would be elected to the city council, becoming the first openly gay or lesbian person to be elected to public office anywhere in the country. She would spend the rest of her two-year term in office and then leave, finding a partner of 25 years and raising a son. She shied away from the public eye, not thinking her contribution to history was worthy of praise. There were so many more people who did so much more um, for lesbian and gay rights. Um, it was their total focus, it was their life, you know, some of them lost their lives for it. And so in that comparison, no. Then this year, Kathy decided to step into the spotlight, accepting an inductance to the Victory Institute's Hall of Fame's First Class, an honor for the largest LGBTQ advocacy group in the country. You know, it was it was very humbling and it it was it was an honor. Kathy was honored beside towering figures of gay rights history, names like Barney Frank, Tammy Baldwin and Harvey Milk. An intensely private person for most of her life, she rarely tells her story. But in recent years, after the legalization of gay marriage, she's begun to change her view, seeing herself as the rest of history does. Although I've been a private person, at a certain point in time, um, I've had to say to myself, it's not about me. This is our history, and I need to share it. She also says being seen has helped other LGBTQ Americans feel seen themselves, a big source of pride for the woman who opened the door and paved the way. You know, I've had people write me and, and talk to me and, you know, they, they feel I inspired them. And um, so I do feel proud of what, what little role I played. Well, Grant also tells us just because Kozachenko left office doesn't mean she stopped being political. She says she's continued to work for a number of campaigns over the years.